Hi guys, it's Jen here from scrapshackdesigns.blogspot.com and recently in the Paper Crafters Anonymous online Facebook group, I asked what you guys wanted to see more of or if I could help out with anything in particular. And what I was told in return was that you guys wanted to see a video showcasing how to turn a standard image into a multiple layer SVG file. Okay, so I figured the best way to answer that question was to come online and just record the steps that I take when I'm converting my images. So the very first thing that I wanna point out is that for my program, I use Inkscape, which is my opinion, which is in my opinion, the best version of Photoshop that you can get out on the market that happens to be completely free, okay? So it's Inkscape, it's a free program, and I use it for all of my digital needs surrounding files and photos, okay? So it's I-N-K-S-C-A-P-E, Inkscape. Okay, so what I did was I downloaded that program, and now I'm going to go ahead and open up an image that I want to convert into a multiple layer SVG file. For the sake of this program, I just went on Google and I searched spring images and I came up with some little triple layer flower that I thought would be an easy one to show you guys. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to open that image for you guys. The image happens to be this one right here. Okay, you can see that there's a couple different layers into it and it's a very simple image for the sake of the video. Once I click on that image, I'm going to click open. Okay. I want to import this, okay? So I'm gonna click okay. That's gonna pop up the image, opened up into what is called my workspace, okay? I want to work with this image, so I'm going to click on it. You can see that you can move it around, okay? You can increase the size of it, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Click on the image to make sure that the program knows that this is the image that you want to work with. And you'll see that by these little black arrows, okay? So I clicked on it. When I'm not on it, the computer program does not know that I want to work with this image. Okay, so again, click on the image. And then you're going to come up here to where it says path on your top toolbar. You're going to click on that and you're going to go down three to where it says trace bitmap. It's going to open up another dialog box. This dialog box allows me to work with single layer images or multiple layer images like the one that we're working with. So we come down to where it says multiple scans, creates groups of paths, and I'm going to click on colors because I want to focus on colors. What I want to do and the goal of this is to get that image down to as few colors as I can because when we go to open it up in our Design Space software or any other digital cutting software that you're using, each layer is going to be a color of cardstock that you need, okay? So I'm looking at one, two, three, and then the background would be four, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm gonna click this down to where it says Scans, and I'm gonna click Four. Then I'm going to update it. That took away that blue background Okay, because what you can't see is that there's actually a green outline, a dark green outline, and that is counting as a layer as well. So I'm gonna push it up to five and I'm going to update it again. This part of it takes a little bit of playing around, okay? This five brought that blue back, so that tells me that it's the white, a green, a dark green, a blue, and a yellow. So there's five layers on this one, which is fine. I am completely satisfied with this image in my preview. So when that happens, I'm going to click OK. When I click OK, when I click OK, that is going to bring me back to this screen where I have two images. I have my original ping image and then I have my new image that I just traced okay if for some reason 
you get sidetracked and you can't remember which image is the one that you want to work with, all you have to do is click on one of them, go up to path, and hit break apart. If your image does not break apart, then it is not an SVG image. You take the original image and you delete it. This is the one that you are working with now, okay? I take this image and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click file and then save as. Now you're going to pull it up here and you're going to see the save as type is an SVG. Okay, that's what you want. If it does not say SVG, then you deleted the wrong image. Okay, so I'm going to put image, flower, and I'm going to put toot for the tutorial. I'm going to save that. Okay, then I'm going to come over here. I use Cricut Design Space, but no matter what program you're using, you open up your program. And then I am going to open up a new canvas and I'm going to upload that image that I just created. So I click upload image. And then right here, flower to SVG. That's going to open up that flower image that I just created. I'm going to click save. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to upload it. Okay, so you click it and click insert image down here. Okay, that brings up my image in an SVG form into my design space. Okay, what I can then do is I come over here and I highlight the whole thing and I click ungroup. What this is going to do is this is going to allow that white border to get out of here. You can actually delete it if you want because you won't need it. This is also going to show me all of my images. Okay, so this was that one that that outline that made me have five instead of four. As you can see, it kind of sits on and gives somewhat of a background um, and kind of combines them all together. Whether you want to cut that out or not, it's completely up to you. Uh, the rest of them, you can see, can be broken apart, can be kept together. You can change the colors. So if I want these two greens to be the same color, I can do that. Okay, and then you um, pretty much have a standard SVG that you can use for whatever you want. I hope this works for you uh, for multiple images, any layers, it's all the same um, steps that you use for all of them. So I hope this was helpful uh, and I hope to see you over at our Paper Crafters Anonymous group to learn more tips and tutorials. Thanks for stopping by and make sure to visit me on my blog, www.scrapshackdesigns.blogspot.com.